tuning in to Real Talk with Tamara. On today's show, I have Felicia Starks on the phone from Louisiana. Felicia called in to speak about her missing cousin, Tracy Winslow. Tracy went missing back in January 23rd um, of 2011. Thanks for agreeing to doing this uh, interview, Felicia. Well, you're more than welcome. How have you been? We, and it's been hard. Uh, it's not a day gone by that we have not thought about Tracy. And they're praying and hoping one day that we'll receive answers regarding her disappearance. Uh huh. Um, so Tracy has been missing since 2011. Is the um, circumstances surrounding her disappearance is it suspicious to you all? The circumstances surrounding her disappearance. Uh huh. Is it suspicious to you all? For some reason, I'm kind of having problems. Okay, is um the circumstances surrounding her disappearance is it suspicious? It, it, it is, it is, and, and we've been for almost five years waiting for answers. Uh, we have been trying to get answers. All those that you know they uh, convicted, you know, ex boyfriend for the suspicion of all uh, her disappearance and all, but. We still have not gotten answers to her whereabouts. Uh-huh. And why do you think the circumstances surrounding her dis disappearance is suspicious? Why do you feel that? I feel like that he did not act alone, and I feel like that, you know, a lot of time was, a lot of time passed, and a lot of things that were contributing factors in her disappearance. And, like I say, it's just, it's just not, it's not adding up. It's not adding up, and... <coughs> Okay, can you kind of tell my audience when you found out um, the, from the beginning, when you all found out that Tracy was missing, how you found out that she was missing? Yes, uh, she actually, me and Tracy had uh, spoken on that Saturday for about an hour and a half. And uh, following that, that Saturday, she went to church with her kids. And, um, and he, a company, actually didn't ride in the vehicle with her, but he ended up attending the same church as well. And who is he? And who is he? Is that her ex-boyfriend? He was her ex-boyfriend, the father of all three of her children. Okay. Yes, and um, basically after her, after attending church, she went home, you know, to return home with her kids and just preparing for the evening to go out with, her, with friends. And, and she came down to a strip board to visit with some of her friends. She was down there around close to midnight close to midnight and she returned back to that area where her mom lived at where she was residing with her three kids and why did she make it to the apartment complex where her mom lived she was abducted from that point and that was right at midnight uh we learned the next following morning that uh her car was burned and she was nowhere to be found so her car was found and it had been set on fire yeah, it was a ghost of flames, and they uh, actually traced through the license tag back to her residence and um, came to notify someone at her residence, which was Benny's boyfriend. And uh, in turn, he proceeded to tell them that uh, he had been at home that entire evening, which uh, we learned that later wasn't the case. Um, the following morning, I was notified by a, a church member that she didn't return. She didn't show up to work and that they had found her vehicle all uh, and gone to the plane uh, the night before. Okay, now prior to Tracy being missing, was there any domestic violence um, involved in that relationship? Was there any abuse involved? She went through many years. They were together for 15 and a half years. And, you know, a lot of she, she shared toward the end with me about a month almost every other day regarding the situations of the abuse and everything that she had been going through and the children had been going through and I learned that you know she didn't really report to the police to the authorities that 
the abuse that was taking place until towards the end, the last altercation and everything. And they, um, that was when the police were notified shortly before that. Mm -hmm. Did she express to you some of the things that have been done to her and said to her? Because I'm sure that she has started speaking to you because she probably has started to become a little bit more afraid of him. Am I right? Yes, you're correct. Uh, she started speaking to me almost every other day and began to tell me her whereabouts and some of the things that she was going, she was going through as well as the things regarding her children and her mother as if she would knew I would be the one to speak, to be her voice. And she began to tell me that, you know, he was following her and sending threatening messages and all, and I just would always tell her, please, just please be careful, and she said, you know, I'm not afraid of him, you know, I, I purchased a gun, and so um, she would allow me, and I knew that she was one that didn't, she was not a, a person that was walking in fear, she was in a very brave, I mean, she was, she was a strong woman, and I know that she had had several altercations with him and guns being involved, you know, with so much of him eating her you know, upside the head with the gun and, and, you know, and shooting in the house. And I've learned all of that towards the, toward the end is when everything began to be revealed. Okay, so previously he had pistol whipped, whipped her. He had shot up her home with their children in it? Yes, and even when he hit her and uh, with the gun in her head, she was asleep and she was awakened to him. Because he had been down the, the night before with the family, and we were gathering, and you know he said he was suspicious that a, a gentleman was looking at her. And when she went to sleep that night, I learned that he had hit her in the head while she was asleep, and she was awakened to that. So, um, Felicia, why do you think that Tracy stayed in the relationship for 15 years? Why do you think he was able to maintain? so much control over her. Well, when he first got with Tracy, Tracy was 14 and he was 24. Wow. So therefore, Tracy was a, a teenager, a young girl. Tracy didn't have the benefit of having a mother and a father in the same home. And, you know, and I realized she stayed in it a lot because she wanted her kids to have what she didn't have. And there was a mother and a father in the same home. But also she was infatuated with all the things, the, the cars and the jewelry and everything that, you know, he was providing for her. And she stayed in it for so long, you know, and like I say, gotten to what she told me. She said, at first, I, I thought I couldn't make it without him. She said, but I later realized I was doing it all on my own. I was raising my kids on my own. She said, I feel strong enough now that I felt like I could finally stand on my own to be. And she left him three months prior to the, for, to the kid kidnapping to move in with her mom and her three kids. And, and he, 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 she, I remember her telling me that. He said, if you leave me, I will kill you. And she took the chance and, and, and took her kids out. Wow. So after she moved out and moved in with her because in the first place you said she was 14 years old he started out manipulating a child yeah she was a child which was statutory rape anyways right yeah. so after yeah. she moved out and um moved in with her parents did he become more aggressive because i know oftentimes especially in domestic violence relationships when a person decides that they're going to move on, sometimes the aggressor or the abuser becomes worse, even with them not being there to try and put fear in them to come back. Yes, yes. He actually, like I say, he did everything in his power to try to lure her back home, to trying to convince her that he was going to change it, that he wanted to marry her. And even I remember him asking if I, me and my husband would counsel them and and he said, because he wanted to marry her. And she said, you haven't done right by me in 15 and a half years. What makes you think you're going to do right now? But he had gotten desperate to the fact that he knew she was not coming back. And I remember speaking to her that Saturday, the day before the kids happened. And she told me, she said, I'm, I'm never going back. And I said, how are you so certain? She said, you can't, you can't even begin to imagine some of the things that I've been through. She said, you don't even know the half of it. And she said, I know that. 
there's no way I could ever go back to him. Wow. So, who reported her missing? It was no one in the family. And, and, and what I've learned, I was told that he was the one that reported her. It was no one. Her mom didn't report her missing, nor did any, any one of us report her missing. And so, uh, but the thing was, I learned after being in court, um, he actually had reported it. And when he was at, actually, he was, while he was trying to cover his tracks, the officer that made it to the residence, and he had said he had never left home. But they had gotten it on the dash cam, him flying down the road to the residence, trying to get back to the house. But none of us in the family reported her missing. Okay. Okay. And so when she went missing, who had her children? Her mom? Yes, her mom um, was actually she was disabled. Um, she had just actually had her leg amputated a month before her daughter kidnapped. And so Tracy there once again was staying there with her as well. But the kids were left there at Tracy's mom's apartment complex. Like I say, she had left them even prior to that to go and visit with friends. And so when the next following morning, my aunt was awakened with the police as well as this gentleman, her ex-boyfriend at the door, to let them know that she was missing, that her car was burned, and she was nowhere to be found. Wow. So the ex-boyfriend actually came to her mother's home with the police? Yes. Okay, and shortly after that, her, her car was found on fire? Her, her car was found on fire before they arrived at her mother's home. It was right at 6 o'clock that morning, and the car actually was learned, it said around 2 something that morning, uh, it was found on the broken plane. So it was a the, the home with the police um, to her mother's home where the kids were staying. Okay, so was the car actually found in a familiar area? It was not in the area that Tracy would normally be in. Um, although I learned that he was picked up from that area about five friends. Okay, and what area was it found in? It was off the North Lake Shore on uh, Carn Coon, the Carn Road, off the North Lake Shore, not too far from the KCS uh, Railroad Service. Okay, is that Oil, Oil City, Louisiana? That's in Shreveport, Louisiana. Okay, Shreveport, Louisiana. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um. So after she was reported missing, and he came to the house with the police, somehow he was able to be the first one. Did he ever speak about how he knew she was missing? He never spoke a word about it. Wow. Now, who has Tracy's children? I'm currently taking care of for the last, well, actually, for the last four and a half years, I've been taking care of her baby. Uh, the day after her kidnapping, I drove down that following Monday and to my, to my aunt's, which is her mother's uh, apartment complex. And as I was there, there were only my aunt there as well as the two older kids. And I, I immediately loaded them up in my vehicle and brought them home to live with me. Okay. And her mom stayed, um, her mom stayed with me for about eight months and her kids were there actually me taking them back and forth to school and all until they went to school one day and his family did not allow them to return back to home. They uh, picked them up from school. So his family picked her children up from school and they haven't allowed them to come back? They didn't allow those two to come back. But the, the older two now, the two oldest kids, um, which is a girl and a boy, the two older ones, and I have the youngest daughter, which is, um, which she's, she's actually nine now. And um, she's been with me for the last four and a half years. I've been taking care of her, but the older ones are now 16 and um, 19. Okay, and how are how has it affected them? Do you do you have any contact with them? I actually do. Um, I've spoken with them um, actually last Friday, and they came down to visit the baby girl, 
and they've been going through a lot. It's been hard. The older daughter, she was attending college, but she had to leave college because she could not handle the stress and everything that she was dealing with. And she's suffering from a great depression, as well as the son. He, they're all separated from each other, and they have no answers. And it's like their life is the, the, the life that they knew that is no longer. And all they're seeing, what he, all they have left is questions. You know, there is no joy when you look at them and, you know, and, and, and just, it just, it breaks my heart to see them, knowing they went from a, 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 a loving kids, and Tracy was one that was, she was a top of mom, and to see them have so much hurt and walk around and still try to live a normal, somewhat normal life, is, it, it's heartbreaking. I, I, I currently have to say I take care of, I'm raising the baby girl, and she goes through a great deal of depression and, you know, she cries and not a day that go by that she doesn't think about her mom and sometimes it gets to the point to where she just, she shakes so much because it's just, she just can't handle it and she said, I don't understand why my daddy would allow me to hurt so much. So they feel that their father did this to, they know that their father did this to their mom. They do know, uh, they were, they testified, somewhat testified during the time of the trial, but because they just could not finish it, go through it, go through with the trial, they, uh, it just, it just tore them apart. So they know without a shadow of a doubt, and they revealed a lot that their mom had been going through that only they knew about. And so uh, they know how to, even before he was convicted, they knew that there was no one, there was no one else to look at. There was no other suspect, you know, and, and to look for in her disappearance. Wow. So what has the police said so far? Because I know earlier on I asked you, um, what did he say when about her being missing when he actually was the one that came to the house with the police? I mean, she did she have a restraining order against him? She never, she had never gotten this restraining order against him. And like I say, even though there were several cases of uh, domestic violence, um, she never really just pursued it until toward the end when she did call the police then and they got involved. But they never really acted on anything regarding him because he was kind of one that was well known, you know, and prominent in the community. So, you know, no one, even even during the time of all this, it found it hard to believe that he would be responsible for the uh, disappearance and, her, you know, her kidnapping and everything. But um, it really, I, what we have, I feel like we're standing in the same place we were four and a half years ago. Right. Now, do you... He's been convicted and found guilty, you know, of all charges. Okay. Do you... Do you feel like, I'm going to ask you this question and then we're going to take a quick break. Do you feel like the police have been proactive in actually trying to locate her? Well, I feel, I, I feel like, you know, in the beginning they were putting forth a lot of effort. Although maybe about two months ago I had an opportunity to meet with the investigator and the lead investigator. And he assured me that they were still looking, that they were not going to stop uh, looking for her and that they, they would continue following every lead or tip that comes through. And, you know, I have, I have great confidence in the lead uh, investigator that was that been handling the case. But I just really feel like a lot of time passed that, you know, something could have done been done about it. We wanted to actually do, um, we, we did our own search and we wanted to put a reward, but then Crime Stoppers actually told us that if someone was gonna call, they would at least talk for a thousand dollars. It really would be no need for us to put up a reward because they're gonna call they were gonna talk either way. For any amount of money. So I, I really feel like a lot of time passed you know, and, and it's just, I, I can only pray and believe that God will one day shed light on the situation and we'll be able to bring her home and give her a proper burial. So you said Crime Stoppers said that if they were, if, if anybody was going to talk, they would talk regardless of if there was money or not, there was no need to put up money? 
class offer, what they do is they stepped in and they offered only a thousand dollars reward. And we had talked to them about maybe if we offer an even higher reward. And they kind of discouraged us from doing that. They said if they were to talk, they were going to talk, talk regardless of any amount of money. So there would be no need for us to even think about, you know, trying to put up any money for a reward because they had already offered a thousand dollars. So um, we basically just into a trip to trust the, the authority that they would do their part and we waited patiently. Oh wow! I, with all due respect to Crime Stoppers, I would have to say that that was one of the biggest mistakes that they could have ever made because everyone knows the more money that's put up, the more people will talk. Yeah, yeah, I felt that as well. But I can say with this being something we we were never, you know, we had never gone through it. Something you've seen on television, never imagine going through it in your own kind of family, you know. And and like I say, we really had. We had no sense of direction. We were just at a loss at this point. And we felt like, okay, well, we're going to welcome any help that we, we can get. But I really felt like if more money would have been offered, we probably would have gotten more answers by now that may have led to, you know, discovering her. So I know you said that he never, ever spoke about the situation, but even after she came up missing, did he reach out to you all? He did not actually, uh, the son, while he was in my care, he said he wanted to go and see his father. So during the time when he was still in the in in uh, Shreveport, uh, we went and made a visit, me and the son, and he had no knowledge that it was us that was coming to see him. And as we went made it to the back to see him, he came in, and when he stopped me and the son, he, uh, he immediately covered his face and he started it crying and uh his son had told me i want to ask my dad where my mom is but when he said before his dad that he saw his dad crying and breaking down he could not bring himself to ask his dad and i remember having a conversation with him and i asked him i said i said i can show these kids love i can provide for them i said but i'm not tracy i said how did we end up in this situation i said where is tracy he said, I don't know, I can't eat, I can't sleep, I'm being tormented for something that I did not do. I told her not to drive on a dark road with that type of vehicle. I know that they would never, they would never take to hijack a vehicle like that, especially with her being a female. And I told him, I said, they did not hijack the vehicle. I said, everything was still on the vehicle. The keys were still in the ignition switch. Nothing was taken off of that vehicle. I said, where is Tracy? He said, I wish I was out there to help you look for her. But I can't because I'm in here. So he said he wished he was out there as if he knew what area she was in. So were there, I mean, were there ever any searches in a certain area like in woods or anything like that? They, I was told that, well, actually, we, we had several searches, but I was told that they did do searches uh, in the Alfield area. It's such a rural area, and it's more all fields and, and, you know, all tanks and wells like that, and it's a lot of, it's an area with several bodies of water. So I was told, I was told that they drove ponds and they, you know, covered acres of, of, of land, places that they knew he had been, and it, it turned that to a dead end. Okay. So I was told that, you know, they did numerous searches, you know, following tips and leads, and each time they did the end of that thing that we were in. Okay. All right. Um, Ms. Starks, I'm going to stop you right there because we need to take a quick break. Okay. And we'll be right back. Okay. Thank you. 